I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live, love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you. So let's get started. Well, good evening, depending on what time you're watching the drive home to Hawkesbury. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and today I am joined by Catherine Hams with Sydney. How are you? I'm good. How are you going? This is Aria. Oh, Aria. I'm sorry. Yes. Hello, Aria. That's all right. You're going to get to meet Sydney in a few months, but this is Aria and Aria... Hey, Aria, look, there's Rachel. Hi, Aria. So, How are you going? <laughs> I've got Topsy wanting to say hello. I don't know whether... Topsy's um, going to say... I think she what might say hello. What do you reckon? Hello. Yeah, we'll yeah let's have a go at it. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, this Rachel. is my little bird right. kid. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> hello. Say hello, everybody. This is Topsy. She's new in the family. And Bruce wants to come up as well. No show without punch. But um, oh, hello to all the listeners. Hello to everybody saying um, hello on the drive home to Hawkesbury. And Aria's big smile. My gosh, she's so gorgeous. She's, she's lovely, so isn't and you had, she? Yeah, you had Mother's Day on the weekend. How was that? We did. We had a lovely time on Sunday. We, um, I had the boys come over. Well, I had two of my sons I saw and my other daughter, as you know, is up in the Hunter Valley so she couldn't make it down. And Aria decided to come visit today to see Grandma, which was great. Hi, Aria. Hey, Kelly. Are you good? You are She's so lovely. Cute. And I bet you get told that all the time, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and that's your favourite toy there as well, is it? Yeah, this is Bunny, I think it is. We, we've bunny. got another one at home, but this is Bunny. Okay. So I just yeah. wonder, though, Rachel, out there, how many um, mums out there, they must have all loved their having their Mother's Day yesterday. Yeah. How, how did you did spend it? yours? Oh, we had a great day out with the family. It was fantastic and always good to catch up with everybody. And um, as I'm sure there's lots of mums that had lots of fun as well on the day. Did everybody have a great Mother's Day that's watching? I hope you did because you're all so special and, you know, it's it's so nice that people can be, you know, the mums of the world can be rewarded on that day. But it shouldn't just be on Mother's Day that we remember how good our mums are and what they, all the great things that they do for us. So I hope you had a good day and um, your kids had a good day with you as well. Yeah. And for all of us out there that, you know, we didn't have our mums with us and they've passed, yeah. I mean, they're always in our heart and they're always there. And they'll never go because they've shaped us to be who we are today. So, you know, to everyone, and as you know, Rachel, I'm in that um, group of people that don't, in, you know, unfortunately have my mother with me still now, but to everyone else whose mother's passed on, I hope you all had a great day too. Yeah, no, that's a really good point to make because, um, you know, it's it must be difficult and challenging for those that don't have their, their special mums with them. But as you say, they're with us every day in the, the little things that we do that remind us of our mums and all of the things that they used to do for us. And even the sense of smell and touch, you know, like just being in a coffee shop, having coffee, you might remember doing certain things or going fishing with the family or, or different things trigger the memories and they're good memories too. So that's a great point yeah. to make. And um, yeah. tell me, what else did you, you get up to over the weekend? You caught up with the, yeah, well, the boys? I did catch up with the boys. And um, my youngest son has been looking at property. Well, they, they're all looking at property, actually. And um, he's been following the property market. And something he told me, which I, I was pleased he asked, well, actually, we talked about it, was the fact that he's been noticing a downtrend in the market in the property prices. Okay. Yes. Now, um, he's apparently he's doing it on an Excel sheet, so he's really graphing this quite well and he's into um, domain.com. Is it, Rachel, that one? Yes, domain.com and realestate.com is the other main portal that a lot of people do use to search for properties online. Yeah, and um, so tell me, do you think it is downturning or do you think Look, that could just be a Sydney trend? Look, I think it's a really good question and it's always ever-changing landscape with property and real estate. But I guess the main thing to consider is the overall picture. What are you looking at doing with your property? What are the boys looking at doing? 
investing in property? Is it going to be short term? Is it going to be long term? Because those things will make a difference as to what the eventual strategy is for the investment. So it's really important from that perspective. You're only going to be losing money if the market does change, if you have to sell and you've bought high or if yeah. you feel as though that you're in that current market and you're not too sure what's going on, you'll only lose money if you sell at a less price than what you bought it for. So if you're happy mm -hmm. to sit there and, and wait with mm -hmm. the property market, but equally over the LGA in the Hawkesbury, we've had an increase of approximately 90% over the last five years. So, you know, there's been strong gains and while some people in the media may, you know, depends yeah. on what day you watch the, the yeah. news, it'll, it'll be a different, you know, story each and every day. So it's really important to speak to the right people, find out what area that you're looking at, what the investment strategy is, whether it's long term or short term, and mm -hmm. make sure you do that due diligence because um, it's really important prior to buying a house because I think everybody um, tries to do the due diligence after they've already bought the house or they've found that there's certain things that they're not happy about or what have you. So I always find if you're well versed prior to going into the purchaser, whether it's your finance that's lined up, whether it's the actual house, your pest building, valuation, all those sorts of things. Find out what's on in the area, find out what's important, whether there's trains, whether there's transport, buses, walking distance yeah. to doctors, hospitals, all of that sort of stuff. Um, that's so, really important prior to. Hmm. Do you have a checklist for people to check that sort of thing off or is it something they could ring and talk to you about, do you think? Because yeah. I'm just thinking that what you deal with, with what you do and like with my son, he's looking I think maybe investment whereas I've got you know my daughter's looking for a family for Aria to have a little place and things like that and then you know my other son he's got a house but the other one's looking and yeah. I suppose because depending on whether they're looking for a home or looking for investment and when it's a home they're so emotional that would must be so <laughs> hard because they're really wanting to get into that first home and yet they've yes. got to tick the boxes it's like oh look this is just this is the price I'll get it, you know so, yes. I mean, what, what do we, what, what could you do or how can you help people like, you know, that get into that emotional turmoil with it? Yeah, look, it's a really good question. I'm hey. happy to share with people the due diligence checklist that I have. So if anybody wants to get a copy of that, just get in contact with me. I'm happy to help you with that. Equally, um, in regards to the property market and anything that's going on, sometimes you just want to call an agent and find out what the market is like, what that area is like. So happy to do anything in regards to that. Always happy to help. That's good. Well, I'm going to give my lovely little granddaughter back to her mum and I think it's about feed time. So there you go. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having Aria on the show. That was great. It was so nice, especially yeah. with Mother's Day. It was so special, you know, just that time of year. It's just a, uh, when they're young. And I've actually just come from a, a, um, a a person's property over in Bly Park and um, hello to Deanna and Jeremy they've got a beautiful family they've just had Mason not so long ago and they've got gorgeous Oscar and I'm, I'm still apologize to people that were expecting us to start at 12 I was Judy called and I was out a little bit late so I, I apologize but um, you get to meet all these great people and see what they've done to the house after you sold them the home and they've just done some beautiful renovations changed the house completely from a three bedroom to a four bedroom adding so much value putting in floorboards new kitchens new bathrooms at a reasonable cost but really adding that value so that they will capitalize on that moving forward so regardless of whether the market's good or bad if you're looking at staying in the property for a period of time do the work that doesn't go you know that you don't overcapitalize that you don't spend too much money and not get that back when you go to market the property but um you know Deanna and Jeremy, you've done a great job and I love that part of my job and it's so exciting going back and seeing everybody um, after they've bought the house and what they've done to it and the renovations. And I think sometimes it's like when people are buying houses, especially when it's their dream home with their family, that yes. they may go into a house and see it a certain way. But, I mean, if they can sort of unlimit their thinking, they can actually turn that into their dream home as it was once before someone else's dream home. Exactly. Yeah, it's so true. And just little changes, like, for example, there was a, a back wall and everybody's probably had this scenario before. By taking out that particular wall and putting a sliding door in there, that brought so much of the, 
the morning sun into and the afternoon sun into the house and it just lightens and brightens the space and even just painting the house a neutral color throughout having neutral floorboards or tiling throughout mm -hmm. even in the bathrooms not going heavy tones or really light tones just something whether it's white or whether it's just something that's fairly neutral that everybody can see themselves in it'll serve you well when you go to market the property or even when you're just living in it you get to enjoy it at the same time yeah. yeah and it's always fun to be able to do those things i mean it's it's it, to change something as you say to try and all the do you know those do itself sort of things they've got at home and gardens and things like that on friday night so always trying to teach people how to do things and to do it cost effectively which is really good as well so well i, I mean i can say see that you and your partner are very talented in that regard. <laughs> I've seen many projects that you've done and you're always doing do-it-yourself projects around the house and just amazing some of the things. Like how do you, I mean, you got your drop saw back from the mechanic the I other did. day or whoever you send yeah. it to. I mean, it's pretty serious uh, renovations and I guess it's a matter of, you know, giving it a go. But well done you. What's the, the best project or the most exciting project that you've been involved with? Hi, Jane. Oh, Welcome I'd... online. How are you? I think I have us. to say that um, I, we've done many things. We've taken a little weatherboard house that was just a two-bedroom weatherboard house into a five-bedroom house now. But um, first off, I suppose one of the things is when I actually went to put a new kitchen and I found it was going to be so expensive. And yes. it was just getting the dotted line signed and not changing price every time. At the end of the day, yeah. I got sick of it. So we went to the auctions and we bought a kitchen for two and a half thousand. And then the fun and games, putting it together and getting it out. But <laughs> I think the thing is to be able to stand back at the end of it and to look at it and say, wow, look what I've done. And it's that achievement yeah. and it's the belief, the belief your own self that, look, I can do it. And today for people, you've got YouTube, you've got all these programs that yes, are there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I want to just say, though, not taking away from tradesmen because there are things we need to have our tradesmen for with electrical absolutely. and plumbing yes, and very true. things like that. You've got to keep within the realms of keeping everything safe as well. Yes. And also it's not a matter of having a drop saw or this and not having your safety goggles and all the other things. So, no, yeah, no, no exactly. Good. Good. No, it's terrific. Yeah. And the, the end result for you has been lovely. And I know that all of our houses, I mean, they're always work in progress. There's always something mm. that you want to do. And you mm. probably feel as though you never get to the end of that tunnel where the light is shining brightly. But at the end of the day, it's a fun journey doing that. I mean, over the years, we've you know, looked at different properties, the families looked at properties, I've looked at properties and purchased some and done some up, some I've held, some I've sold, some I've, you know, it just depends on your strategy is what I was talking about before. But yeah. it's nothing better, as you said, I think you hit the nail on the head, so to speak, in regards to the satisfaction. You finish this yeah. job, you look back and, you know, it might be the gardens that you've done yeah. for that day. I know you've done some really nice gardens along the, the boundaries yeah. of your property recently. And it's just a matter of looking back, watering the garden, going, gee, that feels good. And gee, that looks good. And I'm going to drive into my driveway and see that every day. And it's just going to make me feel warm in the heart. And I think actually mentioning that um, garden that we've done up the side, what um, that came about for the fact that my neighbours are about to build a house. Now I'm on acreage. And um, the thing is that we looked at and thought, well, all of a sudden our privacy's got to go. So yeah. you'd have two ways of thinking that. You could go on the downhood spiral and go, oh, my God, my privacy's gone. What am I going to do? And yes. we could go negative. Or we turn around and went, okay, well, we want to live here and we love it here, so we're going to plant some trees along there. I'm sure they want their privacy too. So it's a win-win for both of us. Um, right. Plus it attracts the birds to come in. And so at the end of the day... It's to try and always look for that positive turn on things and to make not to put a negative thing over your home and keep it always going and going forward. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think I did a video a couple of um, months back on bad day versus opportunity, and it's so true. It's that limitless bit. Talk, talk about what you were saying before is, you know, you can look at it one way or you can look at it another way, and um, I think it's really important to look at things in a positive slant, whether we agree or we don't agree with what's going on in our lives, and maybe sit yeah. back and reflect inwardly and say, okay, well, where am I? What am I doing? Uh, what can I do to change this space? And I certainly know with the feng shui that I, I've been involved with and the training I've done over the years, the environment that we have and that we live 
has so much impact on us. And if we can change that environment to a great place, it doesn't need to be a lot of money spent. It can just be the simple things of decluttering your house and, and having the feeling yeah. of not walking into a room that has stuff. And yeah. you look at it going, gosh, I've really got to get to that. I'm going to do that next week. I'll, I'll, I really will. And then you get busy with work. You get busy with the kids. You get busy with things at home and the business. And then you keep walking into this space and you go, oh, I've got to get. And it just doesn't make you feel that great. Whereas if you just do something each day, it might be a small thing. Even if you take one thing out of the house, don't bring any more things yeah. into the house. Just declutter each day. Take one piece, whether you donate that or whether you give it to a friend, put it's due for the trash because it's years old and it's never going to be of any use to anybody, um, or give it away to somebody else that's going to love it as much as you did when you first got it. Then, you know, you head towards having that positive space and that positive environment, which has a really great effect on people. And I think that you're right with what you say by pulling one thing out. And I think we might have touched on this last week with decluttering. And yes. it's the, I, I chose five things with mine because after yes. having five children here, I had an awful lot of 30-year decluttering to do. And I, I, if I make myself go five things every day, you may think, well, that's not enough. But at the end of the week, you know, I've done five yes. times seven, 30 things out of that place, times Absolutely. that by a month. You know, that's yes. 120 items. And before you know it, you're looking at it, you're going, oh, my God, I just did that room. So <laughs> it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I think people overestimate what they can do in 24 hours versus underestimate what they can do in 30 days. Yeah. And yeah. if we look at it from that perspective, it's kind of like um, some of the Asian attic and, and uh, Asian cultures, they look at a 1% change each day of their life. So by the end of the year, yep. you've got 365% increase in what you're doing. Mm. And I like it that with the business and what we do, we're always looking for different ways of how to prove, how can you add more value to your clients? How can you be a better service? Because the real estate in this industry, let's face it, hasn't had the best rap over the time and probably no. cowboys and cowboy girls out there at different times. But equally, there's a lot of good people in real estate too. And I think that they do want to do the right thing. And uh, it's like me every day I want to sort of look at what's available what technology we can use what you know um, sources mm. that, tools tips tricks anything that we can help our clients make that more streamlined process and stress-free because um, it, it can be quite an anxious time for people when they're buying yeah. selling leasing strata mm. all sorts of things to do with real estate and, and that's what we said it's coming back to emotional or even you know whether you're yes. buying it for your home or not and yeah. talking about real estate's being tainted with a certain brush like car salesman and you're so <laughs> correct in what you say there but the thing is it people get the individuals that stand out and stand out amongst the crowd which is yourself which brings me to the point thank how did you. you go with those awards last week oh thank you yes we uh, thank you very much we got nominated so i really appreciate everybody yep. moving forward with the altitude awards we um we got the finalist nomination for business excellence which wasn't expecting at all but i really appreciate everybody voting and everybody getting behind the business and what we do because i know from my perspective that the team works really hard and we're so dedicated to you know doing what we do every day for everybody and there's so much more behind the scenes that a lot of people don't realise. I think everyone thinks that real estate just bang up a sign and make a lot of money yeah. and everything will be good. Yeah. But there's yeah. a lot of uh, so many steps behind the scenes that you have to do to make that happen. And I couldn't be or do what I do without the great team that I got so that I work with. So I really appreciate everybody that's on board. I get to work with my dad, Warren, each and every yep. day. So that's terrific. And Joanne, my, my sister-in-law, Melissa, yep. and also Sandra. And I've got a new um, employee we've just started last week, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. And also yep. Emma's starting on the weekend. So we've, the team is growing. Yep. We've been looking, we've been hiring over the last couple of weeks and um, we've just sort of found a couple of people that are going to slot in nicely to working with the business and help provide that additional service for people. And you will get to speak to each and every one of them. Um, and of course, Topsy, Bruce and Lily are always available. They're the directors of <laughs> First Impressions at reception, the puppy dogs as you come through. So you get to say hello to them as well. And um, it's always fun at a day in the office. But as I say, I'm very grateful um, for everything that they do for me each and yeah. every day. Yeah, and I, I look, it's been reflected by what you've got, Rachel, and, you know, that's that's it's the minimum of, I think, what the community can give back to you, and I think it's great. 
So, I mean, you said that you've got more people now working, so it's yes. growing for you everything? Yeah. Yes, yeah. The category that I got nominated in was in regards to um, business excellence and also business growth, the most growth over the last mm. 18 months. So I think that that is a testament to what everyone's doing in the office. And we're very dedicated to the cause. We're very dedicated mm. to real estate and the people that we serve. And I'm very invested in that process because it is a family business and because mm. the outcome and the result for them means a lot to me. And I want, yeah. I look at the outcome for each and every person as though I was buying that house or I was leasing that yeah. house or I was, yeah. you know, um, wanting to find the, the dream home. So mm. I'm always looking from the consumer's point of view and seeing how that experience is, is for them. And, you know, over the years we've learned so much and we're always improving that, that system but always willing to take on any feedback from people that are looking at changing things or wanting, you know, a different experience. So, for example, property management, everyone thinks that that's just a cookie cutter set up mm. and, just come in, you hand over your property with your keys and somebody leases it out and everybody does the same thing. Well, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, even down to the simple things of your payments that you get from the, the real mm. estate agent. Some people mm. will pay weekly, some people will pay fortnightly, some people monthly. And it really depends on how you want those payments to be received, the rental income from the property. Yeah. So we can set yeah. that up exactly the way you want it. But it's just one of many, I think it's uh, close to 100 things that we've identified with the property management that you need to look at prior to mm. leasing the property to make sure you get it right. So it's just um, continual, continual I know that, and moving. Um, when I've had property that I've rented out myself, not in the Hawkesbury, it's actually up near my mother-in-law's place, and um, if I didn't have a property manager and I actually suffered from not having a property manager. And at the end of the day, sometimes people would think, oh, well, I can do it myself and save the money. The amount of time and stress mm. and everything you go through, it's mm. really not worth the tiny bit of money you're saving. Right. And you actually would produce more money by giving mm. it to professionals. And mm. that even comes back to like when we're talking about the home handy person doing things. That's right. I mean, Tackle what you want, but at the end of the day, I mean, don't try and tackle things that a professional could do much quicker and you could actually get on with your job of making the money you make and what you enjoy doing. So, yeah, look, it's, yeah. it's so true. I, I completely agree with you. Two things out of that that I get, um, one in regards to the tradespeople and one in regards to a professional. Um, a professional real estate agent, we had one the other day. The owners had been managing the property for a number of years and had mm -hmm. been considering getting a real estate agent in, but just it's sort of the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. They prefer to yeah. have the, the money coming into their account. They can see it, touch it, feel it, and think that they're yeah. in control. But that tenant actually got out of control with the rental payments. So it was close to $10,000 that the owner was in arrears. Now, for us taking that over, that's a big mountain to climb. Um, yeah. There was a, a rainbow at the end of that story and we were able to recover the funds. And the tenants don't necessarily... Hello, everybody. Are we back on again? I'm sorry yeah. about that. Um, yeah, we just had a little glitch, as Catherine said. Thank you for That's right. pulling us up in that regard. Where did we get up to? Where could you see me before I, I was frozen on the screen? <laughs> um, well, what you were explaining, Rachel, is how we could get um, arrears in uh, the rental properties, so like the rent getting into arrears to a large amount. There was a goal, you know, that little pot at the end of the rainbow for them. But I think what was important, like with what you were saying, is that when you get into that point, coming from the, like I'm from the where I've been there sort of thing, that when you get someone that is so far in arrears, that's a really stressful situation to be in. I'm sure you encountered that mm. with the people and they probably thought that it was very hopeless. So for yes. you to come in and to be able to take that up, I think it's really important that this has come up today because a lot of people I'm sure would be out there saying, well, you know what, I am so sick of the stress so sick of arguing with these people and you don't need that bad energy in life. And I mean, no, that's where no. I say don't do that because if you do that, you come and see someone like me because you get really bad energy and then you get sick <laughs> or you give it to Rachel, right, and you let Rachel look after it. She does a marvellous job at it. So you get your money. The only problem is I don't get money out of this, but that's okay. Yeah, but see, they can people. still, they can still, even though they got their ten thousand dollars at the end and the tenant got back in into the right rhythm, they can still come and see you to make sure that they tune in with their body and make sure that's that it. everything's that's fine. It. I think a lot of us forget, Catherine. You might tell the people 
as opposed to myself. But a lot mm. of us, it's kind of like a massage, getting that regular massage once a month or once every six months so that your back is aligned so you're not in, in to go and see that therapist all the time with your back and making sure that it's out of alignment. If you're going mm. to somebody like yourself, naturopathy and the hypnotherapy on a regular basis, they might just tune into where their body needs to be and reset and just work through everything that they need to work through. So, I mean, I, I'm not too sure what your thoughts are around that, but I think it's kind of like regular car maintenance. Just do it on a regular basis and life will be good. Well, you know, I look at it this way. When I started off, I was just doing like mind therapy and then I went into naturopathy so I could give a holistic view to things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not putting the uh, Band-Aid over something if you've got something that's unwell in your body and actually getting to the source. So I think that's important because if you get to the source of something, you fix the problem. You don't want it coming yes. back. Yeah. But, I mean, and not getting weighed down by the heaviness of this or anything, but anxiety and depression, all those sort of things, are things that we don't want to talk about. But, like, as Beyond Blue have it, which I'm a speaker for Beyond Blue, uh, yeah. one in three people for anxieties, you know, and yeah. those are statistics are very, very much there. And mm. to take the stigma away. And this is what I find, though, Rachel, is that mm. some people are worried about the stigma of mm. coming to see someone about mind therapy. And yeah. it's sad because if you broke your arm, you would run off and get it fixed. But yes. when you have a broken mind, you go, oh, well, it's okay, I'll fix it. And you don't, and it gets worse and worse. And for some people, they sunk into deep holes. But, yeah. you know, it's the other thing too, and I've got, as you know, workshops that I'm doing. And mm. um, I have one that I'm putting out there for Worry Well. And it's for people to be able to have a list, be focused, and not to get caught up in that mind chatter at night so they can't mm. sleep, so that they can actually mm. learn to turn that bad worry into good worry. So doing that or touching base or reading a positive book or affirmations or any simple thing that you do, and even if you only think of doing it, it's a small step, and that's yeah. a step forward, and that's all that matters. It's like that 1% you spoke of, 1%. Yeah, yeah. By the time yeah. you finish, you've done a lot of steps or you've walked across the Simpson Desert or you've done something. <laughs> in the, the mountains in Nepal, whatever you've done. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. No, so. that's terrific. And do you think too that the stigma is also attached to <clears throat> the males in the world that we go to them, they fix all the problems. So therefore, um, you know, it's not cool for a guy to cry or it's not cool for a guy to, you know, um, say that he needs to chat to somebody. Like, yeah. as you said, the stigma attached for women as well. You know, you, yeah. you might be seen as, um, I, I don't know, um, less than less than who you are if you present with this problem to people or say something to somebody what are your thoughts yeah. where you see you know like what sort of things are you seeing out well, there so what i see is um, i think you know i also volunteer um lifeline yes. uh, and i did that for some many years and i saw a lot of there i had a lot of elderly gentlemen ringing that were very lonely and lost i've done work with the men's shed up in richmond um, I've actually done a lot with Men's Shed Australia in looking at their offices and what they've got around the place. Yes. Um, I've spoken to a lot of that sort of situation with retired males. Um, mm. I have had younger gentlemen coming to me to see me for therapy, which I, I actually high-five them for doing that because yeah. Good guys are in their 20s that are coming and saying, look, I have yeah. something, I need to fix it. And I love it. And the things I love, they then share my stuff around their Facebook. They're, they're, they're proud of it, which is great. Because yeah. then that empowers other young guys to go, well, you know what? It's not yeah. wrong if I go and do this. That's right. And if anything, it shows that they're like taking a mature attitude to, well, you know what? I have something wrong. I want to fix it. Yes. And with guys that get to the retirement age, yeah, you're right, you know, they, they've been looking after the family, they've had to do this, they've been the breadwinners, they've been everything. It's really hard for them to say, okay, now I don't feel like I'm doing that job anymore and I don't know yeah. how to feel. Do you, you know, think I'm too, lost. do you think also, sorry to cut you off there, but in regards to the mothers of the world, there's an expectation for mothers around 
okay, well, you've just got to be a mum. You've got to, expected to get up, get the kids to school, have the breakfast, make sure their lunches are – have they got their sports clothes for the day? Did they forget any of their school shoes or, or uniforms have all got to be washed? If you only have one or two uniforms, you're always washing those. Then you've got to be a wife. Then you've got to be a person that goes to work. And you've got, you know, there's just this long list of things that you've got to do after school care, after school sport, um, being a mother, being a, a sister possibly, being, you know, everybody to everybody, uh, yeah, everything and to everybody. And, and best uh, friends of people and everything, yeah. That's right. And there's got so many, this is just a big long list of things and expectations for women. And as you say, I think it's okay to put your hand up and say, you know what, I need a hand or... I need some help or whatever it might be because I think the more people talk about these sort of things like you say to somebody like yourself that then they can just release what they're thinking break down what and analyze where things are at and how you can move forward as a as a team because um everybody thinks that their problem is different and that nobody else could be feeling this way or that they've never had well, that you know, situation yeah. before but I'm sure that things have been repeated constantly and constantly yeah. you, you better verse to tell people so when, many years ago well. many years ago when I suffered agoraphobic anxieties for seven years when my children were young in school at Londonderry and um, the thing is that I found that I thought I was alone and then yeah. when I got over the uh, seven years which was through hypnotherapy I then started up an anxiety group and a friend of mine at the time started it with me and we thought oh we're going to just sit around and we're not going to have anyone turn up well, we had about 12 to, 12 to 20 people turn up Isn't and everyone great? looked at everyone. They all knew each other and they all went, yeah. oh, my God, I didn't know you did. Yeah. And so yeah, that's that. it. They, they all yeah. hid behind this fear of this stigma and yet they then, and this is going back some 20 years ago, and, I mean, the thing is after that, that was really good and what that showed me is how many of us are trapped and that yeah. feeling of entrapment that we get. And mm -hmm. for women, as you say, that have all that job list on their hands, anxieties mm -hmm. come from a multitude of stresses that get out of hand. My best advice to anyone is you have to be selfish. You have to have that time out. You have to try and put that chill time in. People say to me, I don't have time. And I say to them, you don't have time not to. Because mm. if you get to a point that your anxieties are bad like mine, that I was panic attacking, I had ambulance coming and picking me up because I thought I was having a heart attack, I, I couldn't stand anyone coming near me to talk to me. I felt trapped wow. to the point that I sat at my dinner table with my Walton's family and I felt trapped at that and was in tears and couldn't sit there. And I, mm. I just, and all the doctors wanted to do, and I'm not criticising doctors here, please don't think that, is put me on antidepressants, 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 and yeah. that I didn't yeah. do it and it wasn't going to help me. And my my, I was that bad, I was suicidal. So that's how bad I was. So, And that's why you've, you've, you've gone in, you've gone in and done all of the study and now helping yeah. other people overcome the same thing because you've got rainbows and unicorns in front of you, haven't you? I think it's because it's hope and I hope... Yes that I can give that to people. It's why I speak for Beyond Blue. It's why I do free talks around the Hawkesbury area to try and help people to get out of that entrapment that they have. Yeah, so, and yeah. That's, that's terrific, isn't it? It's so nice yeah. to, to have that there. And, um, you know, it's those organisations are so important and integral for mm. everybody mm. and in their lives. And as you say, it's okay to to say, you know, that we need to talk, that yeah. we never chat. So good on yeah. you. I think high five to you. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it's a great you know, achievement. I, just, I want to say one thing here while we've got the opportunity to the people that are listening in today and that will replay this. If there's someone that's not doing what they usually do and you think, oh, wow, I wonder why they're not there or they're not doing this or anything or they're sleeping a lot, all these sort of things are signs. Take some time out. And make sure when you talk yes. to someone, take that time out that no one's around and yeah. listen, listen yes. to the person because that yeah. could make a world of difference to a lot of people. And I know that from Lifeline, people ringing in that were lonely and just wanted to talk. Yeah. So, and that's uh, a great point. And if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, Catherine, to, you know, talk through any concerns that they have or need to work mm -hmm. through something, what, how could they contact you? Where do they go? 
Uh, well, they've got my Facebook page, which is the Hypnotherapy and Wellness Hub, or my website, which is uh, hypnotherapyhub.com.au. My phone number, 0408 411 865, which you can write up on the screen so people can say it and I don't have to say it really, really quick. What is your number, 0408? Yes. 411 865. 865. Okay, let's see if that comes up. Look at that. Magic. I love hey, technology. High five. High five. High five to me. Yes. Um, it's always fun and games on this. I know that you had a couple of questions last week um, from the podcast, and it was around herbs, I believe. Would you be able to fill us in on that before we finish up for the, the day? I yeah, sure. I'll just go quickly into that, Rachel. A few people ask me about herbs yeah. and those awful, yucky-tasting tinctures you're made to take. Well, you're meant and to be no a way. naturopath, isn't there, and you've got all those awful smelling yeah. things when you walk into the room. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, and and I, I, just, I give them to people and they go, so this is going to fix me. I guess that's be disgusting. And after that, <laughs> everything is better, okay? So you're okay with it. But... I think what I want to say here about a lot of questions I did get, but I mean, I can cover them on and off later. But um, when people go out and they try to self-remedy themselves, they've got to look at what other tablets or other medications or things they're on because they can actually have side effects when mixed with other things. And that's okay. the same with all these oils that are around and things like that. I do do oils. I'm not trying to sell oils. I do do bush flower. I do all these things and I'm not trying to sell them. What I'm trying to say to people here is give them knowledge to mm. not just go and mix things at random yes. because things do actually contraindicate with other things and they can cause uh, physical and mental issues for people. So my um, bit of advice to anyone, if you want to go off and you want to look at the health food stores, come home, do your doctor Googling, but make sure you get a good source of information, okay? If you don't want to come to a natural health, yeah. <laughs> Um, if, if you don't want to come to a naturopath, if you don't want to even just text me on my you know Facebook site and ask me or anything or get in touch with Rachel and she'll get it to me, but make sure you're careful with what you mix together. Yeah, that, that, that's that's, a, I will leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a really valid point because so many people, you know, I think the media have a lot to do with it as well. It's kind of like in real estate. Oh, the prices are up one day and then you watch the TV the next day, the prices are down. The same thing yeah. with what you're talking about is, oh, buy this product and it's going to make you slim or buy this product it's mm. going to make you feel alive and buy this product and mm. all these wonderful yeah. weird things that they're going to do and whether they do anything or not, it's kind of coming back to that tradesperson conversation and somebody who's a professional yeah. who knows what they're doing. They need to go to somebody like yeah. yourself that's been doing this for a while, knows exactly what where things are at, what's happening, yeah. and what what contraindications there are. We can all Google things. We can all find things online and know what's yeah. um, happening in that regard. But to find, really get the right advice, you need to go to the professional that does it each and every day and really wants to help you achieve what you yeah. want to do. So, yeah. so they think, can go forward and do their things better. I think we've had another glitch again. Yes, I think so. I We're back online. <laughs> The internet, I think it's the wind, the, the wind is blowing and things are coming yeah. in and out. But, um, yeah, it, it sort of comes back to the professional, making sure you get the right advice. So Catherine's always available for any naturopathy or hypnotherapy assistance. I'm always available for any real estate um, advice yeah. in and around the Hawkesbury or abroad. So if anybody wants to get in contact with me and I haven't met you before, I'd love to have a cup of coffee. My contact number is 457 or you can uh, check the Facebook page at Rachel Goldsworthy Realty or alternatively our website at rachelgoldsworthy.com.au yeah. which we've got some new and exciting things that will be coming forward. We've also got some video series that I'll be um, you know, sending out to people. It'll be a free download for people 
both on real estate and also feng shui. So I'm kind of excited about that. It's a bit like your workshops that you've got coming up. Yeah. And um, the location for that will be announced very soon, I believe. We're just sort of going to do a little bit of reconnaissance. We're sort of traveling around Australia, finding the best locations. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that that's really exciting for you to, to do that. And we should yeah. also get Melissa Follington. I'm not too sure whether she's on the line at the moment, but um, get her to, to come on and have a chat about the oils as well, the essential oils, because we've had mm -hmm. a lot of questions about about that with what you're doing and people can yeah. get advice from you as to which oils that they need to use but then there's also suppliers in the local area as well so that's right. um, it's all about community it's all about looking forward to better things with all of us together and to more i guess the more we work together the more we can achieve together so yeah. that's my message today um thank you very much for your time today catherine thank you no for everybody being on the line and uh, if you've got any questions don't hesitate to contact catherine or myself we're always happy to help and we look forward to seeing everybody on the next episode bye for now see ya Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.